What is popping into bringing you seven mustache players that could be breaking out in 2024. My first stash is going to be Parker Washington. And shout out to Parker Washington with Calvin Ridley moving on to the Tennessee Titans. What does this do for Parker Washington? This absolutely means that Parker Washington moves up the depth chart. And now a lot of people forget who Parker Washington was coming into the NFL out of Penn State. Sixth round pick, 22 years old, 5'10", 204. A lot of people compare him to Trent Sheffield. And if you remember Trent Sheffield, he had some really big fantasy football days for the 49ers. And last year, only nine games played, 21 targets, 16 receptions, 4.4 fantasy points per game. Now, you're going to hear me if you scouted Parker Washington. I was a big Ohio, I'm a big Ohio State fan. So you know that Parker Washington absolutely demolished my Buckeyes for a few years in a row. So I know that this guy can get open. And when you have this slot opening in the Jacksonville Jaguars offense, I know there's the rumors they're going after Brandon Ayuk. I know this is a super deep wide receiver class. But when you're looking for a stash, you want to see a guy that has some type of opportunity. And Parker Washington has that opportunity presented to himself. Right now on Keep Trade Cut, my man is wide receiver 99, 270 overall. So he's pretty much free in both your one quarterback and in your two quarterback super flex leagues. I understand you might not be interested in some Parker Washington, but if I'm taking a shot, like I said, if I need to even trade a late fourth to go get a Parker Washington, that's a deal that I'm looking to do because I just think Parker Washington, the overall upside's there, the situation's there, and that's the type of stash that I'm looking to take advantage of heading into 2024. My next stash is going to be Mr. Drew Law, the man that does the dance, the man that we were thinking potentially had a chance to overtake Geno Smith when he got traded in that Russell Wilson trade. That never actually happened, but we we have seen those flashes back in 2020, 15.1 fantasy points per game. He was the QB 27 back in 2020 when he did have a full range of starts, 6'4", 228, 26 years old, so still plenty young. And when we're talking about him in this Giants offense, I mean, you still got Daniel Jones, who has the massive contract. So I'm not over here saying, oh my goodness, Drew Locke's going to beat out Daniel Jones. We've also seen how injury prone Daniel Jones also is because Daniel Jones has to run for his life most of the time. Now, Drew Locke, I'm not saying is, is better than Daniel Jones. I really think whoever is stepping into this offense, they have to add some serious weapons because right now you look around the team, you got Devin Singletary in the backfield. You got a bunch of slot wide receivers. Who the heck are you throwing the ball to? So for me, I still think Drew Locke, the opportunity is there to potentially overtake. And when you're in these deeper super flex leagues, a target like a Drew Locke could pay off value wise in the middle of the season, could net you a future second if you're deep at quarterback. And or if you need a spot start, Drew Locke is someone that I think definitely being able to just stash right now, knowing he's going to be the QB2, potentially has that QB1 upside over some backups where we get them and we're like, hey, there's really no chance that they're actually better than the starter. There's actually a chance that Drew Locke is better than Daniel Jones, even though Daniel Jones got this massive contract that I'm sure the Giants are regretting giving to him. Right now on Keep Trade Cut, QB46, 283 overall. Would you rather have Mac Jones or Drew Locke? James Winston or Drew Locke? Desmond Ritter or Drew Locke? I mean, those are the type of questions that you're going to have to be asking yourself, but I absolutely love some Drew Locke. My next stash we're going to be talking about is going to be Zach Evans, and I'm not going to pull the receipts. There are some of you out there in the Dynasty space that make content on Twitter that said that Zach Evans was the RB1 last year, and then what happened, proceeded to happen to Zach Evans, gets drafted in the sixth round, 5'11", 208, and I know a lot of you were saying, well, he got drafted in the sixth round. It's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, Kyron Williams emerges over this last season. Two fantasy points per game. RB 94 overall. There are really no metrics that I can point to and say, guys, go stash Zach Evans. This guy's going to be an RB1 on your roster. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is Kyron Williams is a clear de facto RB1 in this offense. But are the Rams going to be able to invest? The Rams have a lot of holes. The Rams also have a lot of aging studs at really important positions. Are they actually going to be able to invest draft capital in the second, third, fourth round on a running back when you already got Kyron Williams? I think they're punting it for another year, which to me means that Zach Evans has a clear capability ability to potentially be the RB2 on this depth chart heading into the season. And now while we look and say, hey, they signed Royce Freeman, he didn't even beat out Royce Freeman last year. They brought in Daryl Henderson for a little bit. Why are you saying that Zach Evans can even have some type of role? It's because we've seen with Sean McVay in this Rams offense that there always is injuries on the running back position. So I want to be able to get some of these late round dart throws. Someone like Zach Evans, who we knew he had the production coming out of Ole Miss Inc.'s college, just did not get the draft capital. But I think that the draft capital really doesn't matter for running backs as long as they get an opportunity. And I'm not saying he's about to become an RB1, an RB2 in fantasy football. I'm just saying I think he can give you some spot starts 
So especially in a deeper league, give me some Zach Evans as a nice little stash. My fourth stash that I'm going to present to you is Calvin Austin for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Calvin Austin getting drafted a few seasons ago out of the University of Memphis at 25 years old. If we've known anything about these Pittsburgh Steelers, they know how to draft wide receivers. I feel like they can't miss. I really feel like there hasn't been a lot of misses in that Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver room over the last five to six years. Now, Calvin Austin did not perform up to par of a rookie with only 3.1 fantasy points per game this last year. But let's not forget, they did have Allen Robinson. They did have George Pickens. They did have Deontay Johnson in front of Calvin Austin. 17 games, 30 targets, 17 receptions, 180 yards. Wasn't the best, but 10.6 yards per reception. But we're heading into this next year. We have no more Allen Robinson. We have no more Deontay Johnson. Now, in free agency, they did sign Quez Watkins. They did sign Van Jefferson. And there's a pretty good opportunity that they probably end up drafting a wide receiver in the draft. Pretty high, I would I would imagine. Now, you're going to be saying to me, Kale, this feels like a dumb stash. Why am I going to be st- stashing Calvin Austin? It's because coming out of the University of Memphis, we were super excited. I know he was an older prospect, but he did run a 4-3-2 40-yard dash. And we're talking about Calvin Austin, very similarly to like a Hollywood Brown, a Tyler Lockett. And who does he have thrown in the ball? Russell Wilson, who likes these smaller type fast wide receivers. He also got Justin Fields. So both those guys can throw the ball deep compared to what we were dealing with with Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph over the last few seasons. So really for me, I like Calvin Austin. I think this is a great stash. I think he's probably better than Van Jefferson. I think he's better than Quez Watkins. I know if you look, go look at depth charts, some projected depth charts. They're already up on him. But based on the talent that I saw out of the University of Memphis coming out of school last year, I'm really excited about Calvin Austin. Definitely stashing him on a ton of teams where I need it. The next guy we should be stashing is going to be J.K. Dobbins. And I'm not going to be naive. Whoever has J.K. Dobbins in your dynasty league probably has not drafted him. I mean, there's probably like a, maybe he's out there in five percent of leagues so i understand him saying he's a stash like feels a little bit dumb i mean we're talking injury after injury after injury we're talking acl we're talking achilles just major injuries for a running back where you're like caleb like goodness gracious how am i going to invest into him going into this next year and right now jk dobbins is a free agent after dealing with those major injuries i mean there's workout videos of him working out looking pretty good and as an ohio state bucket fan jk dobbins looked great it's a really unfortunate what happened to his career because there was one point where we were talking about jk dobbins as a top five dynasty running back those days are long over but taking a shot on jk dobbins right now i know he might be on another team you could probably get him cheap you could probably be a throw in on another type of deal to get the ball rolling but jk dobbins I, these are the type of running backs someone that had high level athletic ability someone that knows how to play the running back position being able to get him at his current cost if we're looking at ktc right now rb54 overall player 217 players around him alec pierce ty chandler spencer rattler a mid third I mean, I think it's pretty fair value right now for J.K. Dobbins, and I know he's not on a team, so whoever has him, I think this is definitely the chance to go get him, because the moment that he signs somewhere, whether he re-signs with Baltimore, whether he goes to another team, like maybe the Kansas City Chiefs take a look at him, and I know he went and looked at the Kansas City Chiefs, and they said, hey, no, we're going with Clyde edwards Teller, which is definitely scary. Maybe the medicals aren't checking out on J.K. Dobbins. I think this is a great, very low cost, but high upside investment that you can make in your dynasty teams. Let me know what you think of J.K. Dobbins down below moving on to my stash number six we're going to be talking about at perry and there's been a guy in my comments literally every stash video that i put out that says hey man you need to talk about at perry as a stash you know and when we were in season i absolutely talked about at perry as a low end redraft stash but i really haven't talked about him too much in the dynasty landscape six round pick out of wake forest and when we're looking 6.1 fantasy points per game he definitely had a few really big games week 10 versus minnesota 11.8 fantasy points per game 10.5 fantasy points per game versus the Rams in week 16 and then in week 18 20.3 fantasy points was the wide receiver 12 only played on a 47% snap share but did have two receiving touchdowns big bodied wide receiver they can absolutely go up and get it and where we were looking no more Michael Thomas for this Saints offense I do imagine that the Saints are going to probably address the wide receiver position with maybe one or two picks in the NFL draft would not surprise me but everything that we've seen from AT Paris still only 24 years old and when you're looking at him right now on keep trade cut we're talking about him wide receiver 86 overall 237 players around him Zay Jones, Miles Sanders, Luke McCaffrey, Brandon Cooks, Adam Thielen, like cool maybe I'm, I might prefer Adam Thielen on a contender but if you're rebuilding I think AT Perry definitely has that overall upside that if you could sloop in stash him on the end of your bench that's a deal that I'm looking to do for AT Perry and my final my seventh stash that we will be doing Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button if you made it this far. And you like some Dynasty stashes is going to be 
Kendrick Bourne. Now, talking about a Patriots wide receiver who has produced on a fantasy football level, also been super injured, and we don't know the quarterback situation. Feels like a very risky investment. But right now, on Keep Trey Cut, wide receiver, 93 overall, 215. He's 28 years old, and I hear you. 6'1", 203. But this last year, 12.5 fantasy points per game in the eight games that he played. He looked really good. Like, you probably picked him up on your waivers in a redraft league. If you had him in Dynasty, you were pretty happy about him as a flex option. Now, going into this next year, who are they going to draft? Are they going to be drafting Drake May? That's probably who that's actually going to end up falling into three i don't know i imagine that's what they're going to be doing and kendrick Bourne as the 6-1 203 slot type wide receiver very good and i will be taking that stash all day every day because having those depth pieces at the end of your bench is worth it to me it really is and i understand there's other like there's the juju smith schusters there's a pop douglas who i talked about in my last stash video some of these patriot weapons are just so freaking cheap and they have all the upside in the world because whoever comes in has to look better than mac jones and this take might be taken back and say maybe drake may doesn't look as good can't look any worse because that offense was like 50 passing yards a game and kendrick Bourne still was able to produce in it so give me some kendrick Bourne as a deep 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 stash but i appreciate you guys for tuning into this video if you like dynasty fantasy football content please subscribe we're on the way to 2000 subscribers so i appreciate you guys so much for tuning in and i'll catch you on the next one tune into these two videos if you haven't already and i'll catch you in the next one peace